Hey guys, welcome to the Throwback IT Show, a show where we take you on a journey back with the tech that you and I grew up with. This week, we are looking at a company where back in the day was one of the big superpowers of tech. Um, we've already taken a look at some of the phones that they are well known for, but this week, we are going to look at a phase, an experimental phase, where they went a little bit crazy. So Nokia were the biggest uh, cell phone manufacturers of the time, you know, they were superpowers, they were really famous for their 3210, 3310, 8210 and a lot of other phones. But today, we're going to take a look at the phones that they're definitely not putting on their resume. So it all started on the fourth quarter of 2001 with the Nokia 5510. 5510 was a really strange phone because you know what, it took everything a candy bar phone was supposed to be and flipped it on its side, literally. So imagine a Nokia 3310. Flip it on its side, take the screen, put it in the middle of a full thumb QWERTY keyboard. There you have the Nokia 5510. I think this phone is a little bit um, before its time because you know what, now we've been using thumb keyboards for the longest time. To be honest with you, it was not much used at that time because you know what, T9 dictionaries were really fast when it came to typing. It was a lot faster than using this keyboard. If it was more of a smartphone, I guess it won't do very well because it has a really small screen, but you know what, I guess you can say that this gave birth to the modern slider keyboard for a smartphone. So next up in the first quarter of 2003, we have a very notable phone, the Nokia 3650. Uh, back in the time when Nokia had already started experimenting with colour screens, they had a TFT colour screen, it's 4096 colours. And the one thing about it, they were, is as if it was built around the screen, this phone was built around the screen and it was the strangest keypad ever. It was a circular keypad with um, circular-ish numbers and it really didn't make sense. Touch typing was hell on this thing. It was one of the strangest design phones I had ever seen. So the next two devices are hand in hand because you know what, they look exactly the same. In June of 2003, Nokia released the 3300, which is, you just imagine 5510 make it a little bit more crescent shaped and you get the Nokia 3300. Only difference is the screen was color screen and on it wasn't a full QWERTY keyboard, it was a keypad on your right and a D-pad on your left. So the design of the 3300 led people to believe that you know what, this looks like a Game Gear. It kind of, for those who remember the Game Gear, it kind of looks like the Game Gear, a smaller, thinner version. So you know what Nokia did? Nokia invented the N-Gage. The Nokia N-Gage was Nokia's first and probably last uh, for good reason. But the only funny thing about the phone, I guess you can call it a phone, had to be held up on its side to make calls. The worst things about the N-Gage was that it was a gaming system, but the games were terrible. I don't think uh, anyone really enjoyed using the NGH as a gaming system, let alone enjoyed using it as a phone. So now, here's when Nokia really went a bit crazy. I think the 7 series of phones was just codenamed for Nokia's experimental phase, you know, that phase in college where you go... Anyway, when Nokia actually came up with the strangest phones in the, the series. Um, first up, let's start with the Nokia 7600. As you can see here, it's, it was also released around the same time as the N-Gage with the pointy, roundy kind of uh, shape. But this one's a little bit different. All the phones previously were candy bar shaped or like flip phones or something like that. But this, they decided to make it look like a leaf. That's right, a leaf. So with the whole concept of designing around the screen, what they did was they put a screen, they put it in a leaf-shaped shell and they put the numbers around it. Yep, you heard me right. Instead of the usual 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you know, the grid-style layout, it had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on one side and 6 to 0 on the other side. So can you imagine how terrible that would be for touch typing? Granted, this phone was a very, very uniquely designed phone, but this is a very, very good example of form way much over function. Then Nokia came up with the 7280, also another 7 series phone which honestly, this one was even worse than the 7600. The Nokia 7280 was fashioned to look like lipstick, yep, it was that shape, the screen was a TFT screen, 208 by 104 pixels and it did not very much have a D-pad, it did not have a number pad, in fact it's just a, a scroll wheel-ish D-pad like thing. And using the phone just became insanely difficult. 
They really, it's one of Nokia's forays into the fashion phones with the cloth line phone, you know, they had all sorts of things, the compact man, but this one was the, by far the most ridiculous of the lot. It did not serve any function as a phone, neither did it serve function as lipstick. In all honesty, this was one of the biggest flops for Nokia in my opinion. Right, so those were some of Nokia's uh, stranger phones, you know, what at the time where it was only one function for a phone was to make calls, well I guess to, to SMS as well. It was pretty much changing things to see which looked prettier, you know, which, which was, uh, it was trying to find out what the next big thing was. And um, you know what, not every phone can actually succeed as you can see with some of the examples before. So if you enjoyed this episode of the Throwback IT Show, please do give us a thumbs up. You know what, if you remember any of the old phones that you thought were the stupidest things or the most impractical things uh, that your friends had and you were laughing at them, please leave a comment in the comment section below. You know what, um, I remember the 5510, they were so impractical. But you know what, now we all, we all we have those Kodi phones but not maybe not in that function. Like, I mean Nokia also had the communicator, right? Uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, subscribing really does help us a lot. Uh, it lets us um, know that you are watching and, and helps us make uh, really, really good videos for you. Also, you will get our latest videos in your feed the moment we upload them, not even when we publish them on Live.net, but you'll get them as soon as we upload them, so you'll be the first. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.